Hey everybody, Magazine here. Once again, we're back with more computer craft. We got a little jail going on here, so let me show you around. Oh, by the way, like you like the new HD texture? I don't really know what the name is, but I got it from the uh, website that I had in my previous video, which I'll probably link now. All right, let's get started. So what we're doing today is we have a door, a computer, opening up four different doors on your command. Uh, first, let's show you the program, I guess, and then we shall. Uh give it a go and I'll show you how to actually make it as well and then at the end of the video it's optional if you need a uh, basically what it's going to be is I'll, I'll do the code right out with you and you can follow along if you like that way you can learn it for yourself and uh, you'll be a better computer crafter alright so here's the code hello Mr. Warden please input security code uh, I think it was jail yep okay which door shall you open uh, one two three or four oh incorrect format please input an actual number and then it restarts of course, at that point you have to exit, but here we go, let's do it again, we'll do it right, we'll put in one, opening door one, boom, let's jump, and, well you wouldn't actually want to do that to yourself, but now you're effectively in jail, <laughs> so that works with all four doors, and uh, I'll show you, ooh, I fell in the hole, so I'll show you real quick how that's made, and then I'll show you how to do it as well, so there you go, that is a wireless receiver, as such, right here, that is with red power, I believe. So here's how you make it. You're going to have to dig two holes down. Then you can place the receiver like such. And then going up the wall. Here, I'll jump right down to here. And then you connect to your door. And then you could patch up this part here to make it a narrow entrance. Like such, and that way it's covered inside. Oh, it actually isn't covered inside because I forgot to do this part as well. You could actually put it one here. It's just the same. So that's that. And now for the actual panel, it's going to be a 3x3 three three grid, as you see here. You know, um, the thing that is about it, you're going to have to do it like this. Basically, uh, you have to do your transmitters first. So this is a redstone transmitter. 177 ID and the receiver by the way is 177 as well so you can just look up that as well so you're gonna have to do those first because you have to get them at odd angles especially this one down here you, you have to get like sometimes it won't even work let's see if I can get it here there we go it's hard to do oh it's hard to do it with the actual computer there because it blocks your you know it obstru obstructs your your path so once you got that and make sure they're all pointed inward towards the computer in the middle. Now of course you wouldn't need this anymore so really it's just a plus sign. It's optional if you want you know however you want to decorate it I guess. So that's all you need and then you need the actual code itself and uh, I'll show you how you could actually multiply this code so I just made another panel right so I'm gonna make that for another set of four doors perhaps on this side and I could have effectively eight and you could use this so let me show you real quick you also have to set these up so uh, in my case here it would be five because I'm going to be using door number five. Your first will be you know one two three four, and I go. Actually, I like to go like this. I go uh, five six seven eight. So I go left right left right top bottom. That's how my code is set up. So six, and then ooh, <laughs> and seven. I suppose you could just probably do this right. And eight or derp. Why did I put nine? I am a city. Silly, silly man. All right. So that's that. And here, let's go transfer the code real quick. Super easy. You do your good old app data. You all should know this by now. Technique launcher. And we're going to go and tech it. And saves. Then the world. And then computer folder. And this was probably the second computer, I would imagine. Uh, no. In order for it to show up you'll have to actually turn it on first just once and then it shows up look boom three awesome so uh, that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in uh, let's see here do, 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 do. I'm gonna go in the previous computer I'm gonna grab the programs and I'll put them in the new one and boom it should be good to go you will have to actually reboot the computer before it takes effect there it is. Now, uh, of course, it's not set up uh, for the new doors, but it'll still work. It'll still go 5, 6, 7, 8, just the same, and it'll go to the other receivers. Because all it is is a direction. It's saying if it goes left, right, top, or bottom. It's not actually saying I want it to go to 1, 2, 3, 4 for this one, and then 5, 6. You don't even have to change nothing. So, boom, that's all it takes. Pretty awesome. 
So now we could do the whole, you know, sit down. If you want to just type the code out with me, we'll do that next. And if that's all you needed, well, thanks a lot for watching, guys. And don't forget to subscribe. Always hit the subscribe button. And uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye. This was a map that I was actually using to help out a friend. And uh, I've been procrastinating actually doing this video for quite a while. So thanks to him. And I'm going to add some stuff for him. Yeah, I believe his name was Robert. Yes. And he's a pretty awesome guy. He's rad, so... Alright, and we're back, and I'm using another texture. This one's not HD. This may possibly be my new permanent normal texture. What do you guys think? So here we go. Let's get started in the code. Please keep in mind to watch all the way through the end. If I make a mistake, and I may, I will correct it, and if you choose not to actually watch all the way through, and you make the mistake, and you comment asking, why isn't it working? Well, I'm going to have to kick you in the arse, because you didn't watch all the way through. <laughs> I'm just joking, but nonetheless pay attention. So let's get started. I'll try to speak everything out loud so you could literally just listen and do it for yourself. So we're going to go into the computer and we are going to edit space a new program. We'll I'm going to call it jail. And here we go. Let's get started. First things first, we're going to need os.pollEvents with a capital E space equals space os.pollEvents capital E again, and then raw with a capital R. New line. Then we're going to go print. You know what? I'm actually going to do it a little bit different this time. I'm just going to go straight to the right command. And then here we will say, please input password. And make sure you use the semicolon after password, and then finish it off with a quotation and a bracket. Notice that I did a bracket quotation in the beginning as well. And uh, for whatever reason, if you don't use that semicolon, it causes an error whenever you do it within the right commands. Not sure why, but that happened to me last time. So that's that. And then we're in, that's already giving the user an opportunity to write. And then we're going to pick that up in the variable. We'll call the variable code space equals and then io.read open and close bracket. All right, I'll give you a slight amount of time to finish that up. All right, so now we're going to start with the if commands. And I'm just going to go ahead and go if, a couple space. oh, I'll give it a couple spaces, then I'm going to go else, and end. And I just like to finish my if commands. I like to close them with the ends, as you always need to. But whenever I know I'm about to do a couple ifs inside of another, I like to finish them off before I get started, just so I don't kind of lose track and get confused later on. So anyways, let's get started. So if code equals equals, and always, always use two equal signs whenever you're doing an if check on a string, and a string is basically letters and such, something that the user would write in. So if code equals, and then inside quotations, you could put in your password. So I'm just going to put jail to keep it easy, and then space, then so if the code or the password is jail, and if it's correct, what's it going to do? Well, it's going to start by printing uh, we'll do the open bracket quotation. Which door shall you open? And then quotation and close brackets. And then we will give the user an opportunity to write again. And we'll say one, two, three, or four. Now I know that in the background it shows five, six, seven, eight, but that's just because it's my second set of code. For you, this would be your first one, and you would use one, two, three, four, or whatever numbers you desire to use. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. So then we will give the user, oh sorry, that is the user's chance to read. So don't forget your semicolon here and then quotation and a bracket to close. Sorry if it's a bit sloppy guys. And then we will of course pick that up into a variable. Once again I'll call this variable door space equals io dot read and then we will do a check on that. So here's a second if statement. So once again, let me just close it off and then we'll start doing that. All right, so if door equals equals, don't forget the double equals. If it equals one, then we will do this here. We're gonna go print, open bracket, quotation, opening door one and then quotation and close brackets and then we have to do the actual redstone so that's rs 
Alternatively, you could just type out redstone, but uh, that's the short version. May as well do that. So RS dot set output with a capital O in output, and then a space, and then a bracket, open bracket, and then quotation. And we're going to start with left, because I like to go left, right, top, bottom for one, two, three, four. So left, and then another quotation, and then a comma, and then a space, and then it's true to turn it on, and then another space, don't forget that extra space there, and then a close bracket. And then we're going to do a sleep command to actually keep the door open for however many seconds you need. If the door is right next to the computer, usually two or three seconds is enough. In this particular setup, it's a little bit further, so I'm going to give it five seconds. But all you would have to do is switch that five to whatever is good for you. So test it out, see what works, and then we'll go from there. All right, so that's the sleep command. And then we're just going to simply shut the door with another output. Don't forget that capital O. And then a space, open bracket, quotation, left again. And then another quotation, a comma, ooh, a comma, a space, false, space, and then quo close bracket. So that's false, and that's going to close the door. So that's pretty much it here. And then uh, we'll keep the else here um, as is. And we're going to do the rest of the code in a Notepad++. So go ahead and get that downloaded. That's Notepad++. I'll leave a link in the description if you need it. And it, we're gonna, it makes it a lot easier. Now, before we jump to that point, I just want to quickly um, add the rest of the command here. So I'm going to actually close the uh, program at the bottom. So after that last end down here, type in OS dot shutdown open and close bracket and I also want to do the else for if you get the first password wrong so if you get the actual password wrong which in this case was jail uh, what's gonna happen well we're gonna say you know incorrect um, input I guess so we're gonna do a print command open bracket quotation sorry comma wrong inputs and that way there. Now I'm also going to add a sleep command of for two seconds because if you don't do that sleep command, it very, very quickly flashes the sorry wrong input message so fast that the user probably wouldn't even have a chance to read it. So that's that there. Go ahead and press control to save and then control to exit, but we're not done yet. We still have to do a few more pieces of work, but I'm going to do that with Notepad++ as I was saying to make it much more faster. So just go ahead and open up any um, you know, file folder, or you could go to your start menu search, or, or alternatively, you could also type in Windows key and R. Doesn't matter which way you do it, but you're going to type in percentage app data percentage. You all should know this by now. Then we go into the technique launcher, go into whatever game it is. In my case, it's TechIt. And then I'm going to go into saves, and then I'm going to go, and go into the jail world, or for your case, it would be whatever your world name is. Go into computer, and then find the computer. In your case, it should be computer zero. But, uh, you know, it depends on how many computers are already in your world. It'll be based off of that. So in this case, it's six. So I'm just going to go ahead and open that up with Notepad++. And keep in mind that even once I'm done this, we still have to do the startup program. Otherwise, it won't automatically load and it won't be very effective. So here we go. We're in the actual Notepad++. A good trick to do is go to Language and set it to, uh, it's an L, and go to Lua. And that way there, it kind of highlights your code a little bit. So as we were, just go ahead and select uh, the if door equals line all the way to the bottom of that. Um, actually, all the way to the end of that if statement, just like so. And we're just going to copy and paste that three more times. I'm going to neaten this up a bit before I do that. So there we are. Let's go ahead and paste that in a few more times. We need four in total. And then we're going to make a few changes. So we're going to change the uh, that to 2. And we'll change anything that's 1 to 2. Now, remember the second door, I would like to go left, right, top, bottom. So there we are. Now, don't leave quite yet. There's still one more thing we want to add to the code before we move forward. And this one's for code 3. Oh, I forgot to add this here. That's for code 3. Never mind what I'm saying. Just pay attention to what I'm actually doing. <laughs> uh, I'm a little bit sick, so we'll have to keep that in mind as I'm ridiculously retarded. All right, so opening code 4. And then we'll change this to a bottom. And this as well to bottom.
and voila we have just copy and pasted it pasted it yes we have copy and pasted it all four doors and it's much easier to do it that way in notepad plus plus really i normally just wrote write all my programs in Notepad plus plus because you're able to use your mouse and and all sorts of other functions that you just can't do with the normal computer craft now if this was on a server then you would simply just go to your server server folders and you would go into the uh, whatever it is whichever whichever one it was and you go into your normal world and then you would go into, uh, geez, what is it? No, it's not even that. You would go just into your server folder, then click on World, and then Computer, and it would be in here as follows. So that's good there. Let's go ahead and save that up. And you'll have to reboot the computer in the game before those changes take effect, I believe. So let's go ahead and reboot that. And I'm going to edit it real quick just to make sure that the changes did go through. I believe they did. I might have made a mistake, so make sure you, once again, keep on watching. Now, before I do the actual startup event, I like to make sure that it works first, in, you know, before we get locked into a program that doesn't even work. So just type in the name of your program to test it out. Please input password. Uh, jail. Which door would you like? Uh, we'll go with three. Opening door three. And as you see, it is highlighted. So that is awesome. So jail, oh, close and open again, and jail, what happens if it's wrong? Sorry, wrong input. Input. All right. So if you want, this is completely optional. I'm going to add a nice little touch to it. I'm going to add a fail safe for if it, if someone types in the wrong door number, like if they don't type in one, two, three, or four, well, what you got to do is just go to the final if statement. It has to be in the final one because as it, it actually checks it in order. So if you were to add it to not the final one, it would say it even though it may be not the case. Like if they if if they were to say door four and you add it to the third if statement, then it would say it nonetheless even if it was right. So we're going right to the last one. And uh, right here, if door equals four, we'll go add it to the else part of that statement here. And we'll just say, sorry, that door was not recognized as a proper input. Please, please try again. And I believe that should be good there. Oh, God, I hate how we can't use like even the home key or anything like that. Yeah, just the arrows button. Brrr. So annoying. Anyhow. Got that that part too. There we go. So we'll save that up and we'll exit and that should be good. One last test. So we'll enter the right password, but then we'll enter the wrong input and it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Ah, I know why it didn't work. Because I didn't give it enough time. It did that thing where it flashes it for fractions of a second and then continues on. So we'll go back to that again and we'll just add a nice little sleep command. So I do apologize if it was a little bit hard to follow. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to comment in the section, section below or if you want to even paste your entire code into a personal message, go right ahead and I'll see if I can help you out. There we go. Sorry, that was not right. as a proper input. Blech. All right. So here we go for the actual lock-in program to make sure that this program automatically loads when you approach the computer instead of having to type in jail, which would be 100% ineffective. All you're going to have to do is edit startup, and it has to be the startup. And then I believe it is shell.run, and then space quotations and the name of the program. And I'll do a quick test to make sure that works, and then we'll be done with that. So let's reboot the computer. You do have to reboot the computer once. There we go. Boom! Automatically goes to it. So anybody going to your computer will now have that program ran automatically. So we're all happy. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. Once again, I do apologize if it, if it was a little bit hard to follow. Not feeling the greatest today. Uh, but nonetheless, hopefully it still was good. So we'll leave you at that. Please do subscribe for future content. I usually make daily videos, however, <laughs> until I start feeling, you know, back to my normal self. And I might be a little bit slow on that daily part. But nonetheless, have yourselves a great day, guys. This has been MagusX, the Volatile Gamer, and we'll check you out on the next video. Bye-bye.